Uh, let's bring in uh, Mike Cosi. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm okay. All right. So, uh, so on the way down, and I, I was listening. To, I, I finally had to turn the fan off because these, uh, the people that I was listening to to get information on baseball, this midday show they have with uh, Carton, some woman and some former NFL player, they just scream at you too much. I couldn't stand it, so I, uh, I, I turned it off and I went to uh, Sirius and I was listening to the. Uh, uh, the Major League Baseball uh, Network. And uh, there were a flurry of trades, uh, but none of them really uh, impressed me that much. Oh, there's a couple that impressed me. Um, moving Archer to the Pirates means that the, the Pirates are for real. They're going to try to make themselves a run this year. Uh, Brian Dozier going to the Dodgers, that was another big trade. There was a couple of good ones yesterday. All right. Well, the Pirates, got. I think the Pirates helped themselves out a lot. Well, they're trying to they're trying to make a move. They're trying to make a move, and they're playing decent of late. They beat Chicago last night, and uh, they're playing good ball. All right. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I, I got one more crummy game against Baltimore, and then you got the series with Boston. And how about what's his name uh, going on the ten day disabled list just at the at the wrong time. He gets dead arm every year this time. You know, I was going to think that. They're saying it's just, you know, I'm glad you said that because I was reading the story on this, and they said, oh, no, this is only a light thing. Blah, blah, blah. But I remember this happened to him before, yeah. Usually he pitches through it. He struggles through it. Um, I think the best thing for them to do is to shut him down because last year, um, this time of year, he, he lost some of his fastball. He lost a lot of movement on his slider. Um, he still won games last year, but he wasn't as effective as he was in the beginning of the year. And he always he always does that. He gets off to a good start, and then in in August he doesn't pitch as well as he did for the rest of the year. And he's not that consistent throughout the year at that point, as evident last year when the Astros knocked the heck out of him in the playoff game. So I don't think it's a bad thing for them to shut him down for two weeks because they got a six game lead. I think it's five now. He lost last night, and. Uh, it, it, they're probably going to split the series with or without him, and they, they they never match up Severino against him anyway from one way or the other. I don't know who's doing that. But I think for the long run for the Red Sox, looking at the bigger picture, it's the best thing to do to shut him down. It's just coincidence that it's against the Yankees. They're not ducking him, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, as long as uh, Vincent Price doesn't pitch against the Yankees, there won't be any horror stories for Boston. I like the way I fit that in there. That was funny. <laughs> All right, so now talk about horror stories. I was going to say, in, in one of the worst series, in one of the worst seasons in a long time, the Mets set a record yesterday. Unbelievable. What was it? Twenty-five to two. Twenty-five to four. Oh my god. <laughs> and they, I think they scored three runs in the ninth to give them four. Twenty-five. It was fourteen nothing, I think, after the second inning. It was unbelievable. Crybaby Matt didn't even finish the first inning. I would have left him out there. I mean, when you give up eight hits in the first inning, in, on thirty-two pitches only, I'd say, you know what, son, you put this game away for the other team. Now you're going five. I don't care. I don't care if they scored nineteen off of you. That's what I would have done with him. But the Mets destroyed their bullpen yesterday for what it is um, in, in a game that was over in the first inning. So um, a bad job by the manager. It was 10 nothing after two, folks, not 14. 13 after three, 16 after four, 19 after five. Um, but as long, however you want to slice the pie, when the New York Mets are down 7 nothing in the first inning, the game's over already. And uh, no way would I have taken Mats out of this game. I would have left him in there to grow up a little bit. Huh. Yeah, all right. I've never seen anything as bad as – and it wasn't only 26 hits they gave up. It was the way that the Mets played in the field as well, um, missing double plays, booting balls in the outfield. There was one play when uh, Reyes was pitching, I think it was in the eighth inning, and they said that um, Nimmo made a dive and catch to try to catch the ball. He made a dive and attempt to catch the ball, and the ball went right under his glove. He missed the ball. He missed the ball. It's something like you see in Little League. Man, his team is awful. Yeah, well, 
Hey. One of, I was out getting a slice of pizza and they had the game on, and one of the pe- persons said, well, they have the, the mercy rule, don't they? That's how ignorant people are that watch baseball. Now, remember last week when we were joking about that pitcher that got uh, hand, foot, and mouth disease? <laughs> it happened again. <sighs> what, what, uh, uh, Hap has been, was diagnosed with a very light version of hand, foot, and mouth disease. You, you want <laughs> Mike. Yeah. I, c- In 50 years of baseball, <laughs> I've heard it twice. <laughs> and within two weeks. I don't know. What? I, I don't even. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I, I saw this and I said, "You got to be kidding me." I saw it yesterday and I rebooted my computer to look at it again. It's not. Nah, I can't be right. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Awful. Just completely. How does that happen? I don't. I, Mike, I. It's. I have no idea. Uh, it's, Someday we're going to read that some somebody on the Mets got bit by a dragon or something. Uh, unbelievable. All right. So now, uh, where do you want to go in sports? Um, like we were talking a little bit the last two days with the Phillies going up to Boston, and how everybody's saying Boston is the best team in baseball. Well, then I guess the Phillies have a shot to win the World Series because uh, they lost in the game 2-1 in 13 innings on Monday, and they beat them yesterday 3-1. So I guess the Phillies are for real, if you want to go with it that way. Um, they went up to Boston, limited the Red Sox to two runs, um, and, and was in a position to win both of these games. They went a posi- You could say they were in a position to lose both of these games too, but they didn't, uh, and that's all that matters is if you win or lose. And Philadelphia beat Boston yesterday 3-1. Like we said, the, the, the Pirates made a move, and they re, they've been responding lately. They beat Chicago yesterday 5-4. Chicago is the top meet in their, in their division. And uh, Milwaukee made themselves a nice, a nice trade yesterday, too, and they, they beat the Dodgers yesterday 1-0. So a lot of teams are waking up a little bit. Oakland continues to roll. They beat Toronto 6-2. Arizona beat Texas 6 nothing. Cleveland beat Minnesota 6-2. So the, uh, the Habs are starting to show a little bit of uh, remorse here and uh, beat up on these little teams. And uh, they're starting to take place now to see who's really a contender and who's a pretender. All the trades have been made and see how things work out and uh, see how things play out. And in the big series, Astros and the Mariners, uh, the Astros showed showed up. They beat the Mariners yesterday, so uh, all's good in Houston again. All right. Do uh, you have any racing for us, Ray? Yeah, I got a race today. Uh, I'm betting. I'm not betting. I'm uh, I'm picking it. It's whether it's on the turf or not. I'm not going to try to uh, play mind reader as well as trying to pick these horses at Saratoga, which have been almost impossible to pick of late. Um, the ninth race today is a New York bred. 40,000 optional claimer, five and a half on the turf. Uh, my pick is the 11 horse, Banana Thief, uh, trained by Steve Asmussen, ridden by Santana. Um, the most consistent rider, I think, in my opinion, this meet so far has been Santana, especially when he rides for Asmussen. Um, Santana was on this horse for the first time last time out at Belmont. I got to know the horse and uh, expect this horse to go today. Uh, big guns, eight to one's a very nice price, too. So, in the ninth race at Saratoga to take the eleven horse on the turf banana thief. All right. And that is a, that is that is the Saratoga pick of the day. 